What is going on, everybody? Welcome on back in the Philly Take with RB. You already know who it is, man. RB here. Hope everybody is having a beautiful day here on this Thursday afternoon. Figured I'd come back on with another live stream. We had fun on Tuesday. Mine as well, right? I said we'll start doing this multiple times a week. Shout out to everybody, the Fire Take members, the Mod Squad, all the people that consistently rock with the content and the channel. I really appreciate you guys, man. Hope everybody's doing well. If you are in here or if you are catching it on the second time around, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you are new to the channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you are instantly notified anytime I upload or go live. Hold up. Let's drop the intro. Drop the perfect. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is going on, everybody? Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, let's see what we got in the chat. We got my guy Scott Lawrence in here, Asia Roberson. Shout out to the channel members. We have uh, BLSG. What's up, Andrea? Nothing but Sixers. Adi, what's good? Ter- uh, Terrell, Joel, do a 180 and bead. Actually, what's good? AJ Show, what's good? Brian, what's up? Superhero, my guy, what's up? I saw the merch, and next month I'm going to copy one of the drinks. Well, that's a perfect transition because I would love to announce here, and Superhero reminded me that we have finally dropped our first merch line, guys. After a long process, a lot of things on the way, we have dropped the first official merch line, Philly Tay with RB Merch. If you look at the pinned comment in the chat, um, it'll take you right to the merch store, man. Hold up. Let me see. I got the little video here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, guys, if you want to support the channel, if you're interested in copping some merch, hit that link in the pinned comment. Yes, sir. Hope everybody's doing well, man. We're going to talk some things today. Sixers free agent targets. We're going to react to an article um, that I saw online. I didn't even look at it yet. We're going to react to that. We're going to look at some potential free agents. Um We're going to talk about the NBA Finals a little bit because things are getting spicy. And we're going to talk about what we believe is going to be the Sixers offseason plan. But let's go, man. Appreciate everybody that has been uh, tuning into the videos. And like I said, we're going to be live streaming um, a couple times a week. I'll be on vacation next week. But after that, man, you know, we got the NBA draft. We have free agency. We have all this stuff, man. I'm excited. I am excited. Mr. JS, what's up, man? Kevin Cronin, what's good? Master Gaming, big play. Coach Dante, Michael, what's up? What is good? Indiana Sports Talk, what's good? <coughs> Woo! All right, man. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get into it. So, Sixers, free agent targets. So, I came across an article today, and this was written by, let's see, when, when did this come out, actually? Let's see. July 13th, so two days ago, written by Noah Levick, Sixers writer. Um, And hold on, let me pull up the article here. Do we have the Bucs taking the series now with what we've seen the last two games? We're going to talk about it, AJ. We're definitely going to talk about that, bro. Who? What's going on? Kane, what's up? Superhero, what's good? I think the bench rate is going to heat up in the next two weeks. In terms of the bench rate, in my opinion, you know, if you guys didn't see my video yesterday, be sure to check that out at some point. Um, the Kings are interested, the Pacers, like I said, there's going to be a playing field for Ben Simmons. And <laughs> to be quite honest, I think that, um, Daryl Moore is going to really wait it out. I think he's going to find the best offer possible. And I think he's going to think as large as possible before we go ahead and make a move. So I, I don't think it's going to happen like during the draft or something like that. I really think it's going to take some time, but, um, that's just me. Danny Saint, great channel member. What's going on, Danny? He says, what's up, everyone? I'm at work, so I'll be listening at my desk. Shout out to Danny, man. LeBron, what's going up, man? What's going on? And actually, we're going to be doing uh, some draft content. Don't worry, man. I'll try to get at least one or two draft vids out. Even though we do have a late pick, we'll try to uh, to get that out. But anyway, let's pull up this article here. Um, let's see. Share screen. Bang. There we go. Easy like that. Easy like that. Alrighty, so 
this article that I am literally looking at for the first time here, 2021 NBA free agency, 10 options for Sixers with veteran minimum contracts. So um, these aren't like, you know, actual top stars, but maybe just some some gl uh, glue guys, some role players that might be available. We're going to take a look at all the free agents that are available. And obviously, you know, after the finals, things are going to heat up, right? Guys are going to opt out of their player options and things like that. So we don't have a full idea. But right now, to be honest, this free agent class is not looking too strong. It really isn't. Um, so I think, you know, if players are available via trade, I think you might get some stars that way. But overall, this isn't really a strong free agent class. And even some of the guys that are free agents are probably going to get scooped up by their old teams. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe if you're in here. Let's get into this. I'm interested to see what they say for the vet uh, minimum. If you guys remember, we signed Dwight Howard with the veteran minimum uh, for the, um, you know, it's, it's like a allocated proportion um, of the cap that you're allowed to use. Um, and it, it's a certain amount. I think, I think... I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be at this year, but you know, there's a bunch of things, right? Like the, the mid-level exception, the, um, the non-taxpayer mid-level, like there's a bunch of things that you can use. Um, the vet minimum is probably the, one of the most common that we usually see, right? Like if you pick up like an old veteran or something and basically it's meant, you know, for the NBA to kind of like keep the circulation of veterans, right? Like they want to give these guys jobs. Um, so just how we signed Dwight Howard, we could be looking to pick up, you know, some of these vets here. <coughs> Let's see. Are these 2021 NBA free agents or 20? This is uh this year, this year, 2021 NBA free agency, 10. Op We're going to look at all the free agents. These are just veteran minimum that I wanted to, to look at with you guys. Um, All right. So Damian Lillard are likely at the front of many Sixers fans minds. The team moves on the margin will be important this off season. I agree with that. We're going to need some good, you know, role players bench. If we could kind of, you know, spark, say like a, a great bench player, like we, we sign one of these guys similar to Dwight Howard and his impact for us, we could sign a guy, right? Maybe he's looking for a new home. He's, you know, kind of on the downside of his career, but maybe he could produce in Philly. Like we need, we need better bench players. We do. All right. Let's see. Uh, Sixers president Daryl Morey signed Dwight Howard to a vet min last November in his second offseason. <clears throat> Will Morey be able to find any gems for the minimum? The understanding the vet minimum candidates are inevitably flawed and far from guarantees. Ten possibilities. Langston Galloway. Sixers expressed interest in Galloway ahead of the deadline. Uh, 29-year-old ultimately stuck with the Pistons, joined the Suns in free agency. Six foot one hasn't been part of Phoenix playoff rotation. He can shoot the ball. Eh, eh. Langston Galloway, he's an eh for me. Next one, Sterling Brown, definitely a no for me. Brown was assaulted in Miami, suffering facial lacerations and a serious scary incident. He didn't play for the rest of the season. In 51 games with the Rockets, he shot a career best 42% from long distance. He's a versatile physical defender who makes open shots and rebounds. Um, I believe Sterling Brown was suspended before, too, by the NBA like a couple times. I'm not really big on, on these first two. I hope hope we get uh, some better names here. But you guys let me know. Like, Just keep – you know, throw your thoughts in the chat. Let me know what you guys think. Um, Wayne Ellington would be a 3 and D guy. Yeah, Wayne Ellington's a free agent. He might be on here. Um Wesley says Spencer Dinwiddie. I would I would take Spencer Dinwiddie, depending on how much he's going to get paid. You know, I would definitely take Spencer Dinwiddie. He's a Sixers killer. You know, at heart. I would trade for Eric Gordon to come off the bench. Yeah, I heard the Rockets are aggressively trying to move Eric Gordon. Um, I would definitely take Eric Gordon as well. But the only thing with him is the injury concern. He gets hurt a lot, man. He gets hurt a lot. Superhero says, I'm torn on Dwight Howard. He had a decent regular season, but even the playoffs, dude, was just manic. Is it? Well, the thing about me with Dwight Howard is, like, you know, he's just got to calm down sometimes. Like, he gets in foul trouble too much. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have, like, a great offensive game. I love his energy, though. I love his presence. And when – it seems like when he's really locked in, 
you get some of them flashes of the old Dwight Howard. You know what I mean? And um, of course, we're probably going to be looking uh, for some free agent options as backup center. But if Dwight Howard wants to return, because I know he loves Philly, um, I would definitely think about bringing him back on a, on another minimum for sure. <clears throat> for sure. Um, Dwight was great until we realized he can't play next to Ben Simmons. Bring Lou Will back. I mean, I I heard Lou Will might try to return to the Hawks, to be honest. I heard there's some, uh, some interest there. But, of course, I would take Lou Will. 42% from three is no slosh. You're right. You're right. I mean, you know, maybe these guys are kind of like gambles, you know, like you, you take a bet on them. And if they don't work out, you, you know, you just brush it off. It's fine. But if they do, you know, some I'd say like at least a couple of these guys usually work out well. Some of these guys usually work out well. All right, next one. Tory Craig, a.k.a. the man who's about to get a ring no matter what happens. Literally, no matter what happens in the finals. He played for both teams. He's going to get a ring. Um, Tory Craig can seemingly do a little bit of everything. One can easily imagine him giving the Sixers head coach Doc extra flexibility with his solid defense and demonstrated ability to play as a small ball five. It wouldn't be surprising if he earns a pay raise this summer. Um, I, I've seen some good things from Tory Craig. I've seen some good things. Um, he's, I think he's getting some minutes here in the finals. Uh, I, I mean, he's a guy to keep your eyes on, you know. Tory Craig's kind of, you know, he's another little energizer bunny, right? He can get fired up. He can get in guys' faces. Not too bad. Number four, Gorgi. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I usually say Dang or Zhang, but I'm going to just say Dang, Gorgi Dang. Um, Sixers are one of the teams that pursued Dang in the buyout market. I do remember that. He went to the Spurs. Uh, he wound up signing with the Spurs and had one of his better games against the Sixers, scoring 17 points on May 2nd. He's a pick-and-pop threat and would not be a bad option. I, I like the idea a lot of going after Gorgi Dang. I do. Moving forward after the trade deadline with only one true backup center in Howard, one of the Sixers' four unrestricted free agents did not work out. I mean, this is a guy that you keep your eyes on. I think he's going to have a, a pretty wide market, to be honest. I think he's going to have a, a, a decent market here. I know he has been working on his shot. McKemo, what's up? King J, what's good? Dinwiddie would be a huge pickup. Would I start Matisse this next season? I don't know if he's ready to start yet. It depends what we do in free agency. I would still probably bring Matisse off the bench unless like his shot just significantly improves and we see that. Um, but down the road, Matisse could probably be a starter. Maybe not at the beginning of next season, but, you know, if he keeps working on that shot, I mean, it's almost hard to not put him in the lineup. You know what I mean? <clears throat> next one, Wayne Ellington. Here we go. Someone said it earlier. Uh, I'm taking Wayne Ellington every day. I'm taking a gamble right there. Former Episcopal Academy star, the 33-year-old Ellington has played for nine NBA teams. Could his hometown squad be the number 10? Dang, he's played for nine teams, man. At this stage, everyone knows about what Ellington brings to the table. 79% of his shot attempts have been three-pointers each season. Yeah, um, this is a guy right here I'm keeping my eyes on. Three and D. You know, guys usually like to return to their hometowns later in their career. Um, they like to just come back in here smooth, flowing, right? I don't know. if Has Wayne Ellington ever won a championship? I'm not sure. I would have to go and look at all the teams he's been on. I would doubt it, though. This was one guy that I looked at during the trade deadline, if you guys remember, and I'm, I'm just baffled, right? The Pistons traded DeLon. First, they trade DeLon right to the Kings. Like, what was the point of that? You didn't even trade him to a contender. And then you go out, and you don't even trade Wayne Ellington. Why did the Detroit Pistons hold on to Wayne Ellington? Why? Just for, for fun? Like, they, they could have gotten something back for Wayne Ellington. They could have sent him to a contender. They could have sent him to Philly. And they literally just sat there and just kept him for no reason. No reason at all. I don't think he's been on a really good playoff team, let alone titles. Yeah, I don't think so either. And he just started – I mean, he's one of these guys that's gotten better at his, as his career went on, you know, so. Vincent, what's going on, man? 
Tanner says, who's better, Giannis or Embiid? I'm still taking Joel Embiid, but it's kind of hard to compare. They play different, you know, different styles of play. Adi says they wanted to piss Sixers fans off. Exactly. Like, what was the point? Like, this was literally a perfect fit. Could have came off our bench. Could have been more consistent than Furkan and Shake Milton and all these guys. And you kept them for what? I don't even think they kept playing them later on in the season. <coughs> I don't get it, man. Number six, Harry Giles could be a backup four for us, maybe small ball five. Signed a minimum deal last offseason, didn't play much. Uh, 23 years old, athletic, a talented passer. Whether he puts it all together to be a good player remains to be seen. He'd be an interesting signing for the Sixers as long as the team added a more veteran, dependable backup. Sixers have Paul Reed in house and might be inclined to give him. Yeah, I would I would roll with a guy like Paul Reed over Harry Giles. I remember Harry Giles was supposed to be like a top five pick, and he just he never panned out, man. Austin Rivers. How about this one? I remember I made a video last offseason saying, should the Sixers sign Austin Rivers and pair him with Doc? Well, Austin Rivers started to ball out in the playoffs for Denver. He stepped up, right, with Jamal Murray going down, and, you know, Rivers was pretty much just sitting at his house playing video games, and they called him up, and he said, yo, all right, I'm down. And then he, he ended up becoming a starter. Like, can Austin Rivers prolong this type of style? Probably not. Probably not. But if we brought him in, I think he could contribute off the bench. But then there's this whole element of, you know, daddy son ball. Um, and if you remember what happened in L.A. years ago, a lot of the rumors state that Chris Paul was frustrated, openly frustrated, because he felt like there was a lot of favoritism. And I wouldn't put it past Doc to favorite his son. I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Um, I could see Austin Rivers coming here and becoming a starter and, you know, we go trade for a guard and <laughs> they don't play anymore. I doubt uh I doubt this will ever happen, but um Tyrese healed and two first for Ben. Uh, I'm not saying no to that. If you saw my video yesterday, I think the Simmons rumors, I think uh Fox or Halliburton have to be included in that deal. I don't see any other way that it gets done. Um Kings are crazy if they don't think they're gonna give up one of them to get Ben Simmons. Like even though all the smack we talk on Ben Simmons, he's still gonna have a lot of value because He's still 24 years old. He's still, you know, one thing away from potentially being great. And he's probably one of the best defenders, if not the best defender in the league, that can guard multiple positions. So as much as it's, it's a weird thing when it comes to Ben Simmons, right? Because when you look at it from the outside, you have reporters that look at Sixers fans and they're like, oh, they're being way too hard. They're being disgraceful because of, you know, Ben Simmons is so good at other things. Like, why are they complaining? But then if you come in and you like watch every Sixers game and you support this team and you really analyze it by the day, you see that like, dang, like this guy can really, really be a great. You know what I mean? This is why if you looked at this entire season, nobody on national television was talking about Ben Simmons, right? Because those people don't watch every game like we do. They don't watch every single game. They watch the primetime games, they watch nationally televised games. But when it comes down to it, right, and this is why it exploded in the playoffs, because every game is on TV, and these people have to watch those games. And it was finally smack in the middle, you know, right in the middle of everything, right in front of their face. Like, wow, this guy's really not taking advantage of anything on offense. That's why it wasn't even, like, brought about. But – then you still have people that, you know, live in Sacramento and L.A. and, I don't know, New York. And they cover, you know, they talk about the Sixers. And then they're like, oh, well, why are they being so hard? This is why. This is why. You got to watch it. You got to watch it day in and day out to see, you know. You can, like, stats are deceiving sometimes. They are. <clears throat> If Austin Rivers came here, Max, you would never see time again. If we get the playoff, Austin, I think it's a great idea. If not, I wouldn't sign him. I hear you, Barm. Scott, what's going on, my man? Shout out to the Fire Take members in here. 
all the members in here, be sure to check the members community post, man. Uh, we got special discounts on there. If you guys have not seen yet, the merchandise is out. Be sure to check it out, man. Keep Boston Rivers far away. We see how Doc favored Shake Moan over Maxi. Exactly. Exactly. A report came out about the Spurs being interested. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Son and son in law on the same team, only Doc. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be? That's actually crazy, Barm. You got your son on the team. You got your son in law. Who's next? Doc Rivers' daughter going to suit up? I don't care what the national media. I agree, Kane. I agree, hundred percent. But it, it don't. It's it's crazy how it kind of seems like once the narratives get pushed in the national media is when teams you know start to act on it. And then and then they try to play us out to be the bad guy, you know, but. It's very frustrating. G Mom, what's going on, man? Shout out to another great channel member in here. What's up? What's up? I see that if we gave Ben three to four years and Joel didn't have such a small window because of injuries, we'd have a dynasty. Maybe, maybe, but it's still, you know, we we don't know. Like Ben Simmons is a very unique case. But it seems like we have a lot of those, right? But Ben Simmons could, you know, he could become a great offensive player and be one of the best in the game. Or he could just go about and keep being a role player and just be satisfied, and that could be what he is the rest of his career. Like it, we really don't know. It's it's literally all on Ben. It's not on Sixers fans. It's not on the organization, right? Like we the coaches have tried to tell him to shoot before Brett Brown. It, like I don't like Brett Brown, but he literally came out and said, "I want Ben to shoot every game the rest of the year." It's really all on Ben if he wants to if he wants to do it or not. So. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, let's keep going here. Luke Cornett. I'm not even going to read this one. I don't know. What is this? No Levick? I don't know why you put this in here. There's no way we're signing Brad Stevens' long-lost son, okay? There's no way we're signing Brad Stevens' long-lost son. It's not happening. It's not happening. I don't even know why you put that in there. Let's uh, The seven-foot-two Cornett is a willing outside shooter. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Sixers reporters have to talk now. A willing outside shooter. <laughs> Usually makes the right decisions as a passer. Really? Signing Luke Cornett would be like signing Big Baby Davis at whatever age he's at. It really would. No impact at all. How dare you put Luke Cornett on this list? Cornette is the type of player who would theoretically pair nicely with Ben Simmons, especially if he bounces back a bit as a three-point shooter after making only 25% of his attempts last year. What, like, now I'm questioning why I even read this article. Now I'm questioning why I'm even reading this article. How are you going to say that he would theoretically pair nice with Ben Simmons and then say that he only made 25% of his attempts last year. Come on now. Next one is Solomon Hill. He's okay. Playoff stint was short-lived but valuable this season. 30-year-old, decent defense, and appeared in all but one regular season. semi Ojale, he'd be okay. And that's pretty much where we're at. So those are just some vet uh, minimum contracts. Hold up. All right. So there's that. Let's let's look at the actual free agent market now. All right. <clears throat> LeBron didn't win anything until he was 28 years old. Yeah, but LeBron got to the finals, and look at who he carried to the finals early in his career. Like, it, we can compare that. But what's the difference? LeBron actually shot the ball. He actually tried to win. Come on, man. That's the crazy thing about it. That's the crazy thing about it. We literally have a team that can win with our stars before they mature. But we didn't take advantage of it. But, yeah. So, if we look at um, if we look at guards, right? Like, there, this is a very weak class right now. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. 
Gmon says, I'm a Philly fan all day. Shout out to you. Chris Paul, he's probably going to go back. What do you guys think? Chris Paul back to Phoenix? I think so. I don't think he's leaving there. Um, Mike Conley, is Mike Conley a guy we're going to bank on for? I don't even know how much he's going to get paid, but 33, 14 years in the league. Mike Conley, I guess he could be a fallback option. <sighs> Kyle Lowry, I could. That's that's kind of like my fallback plan right now. If you've been check, if you've been seeing my content, like I could see Kyle Lowry being like a uh, a sign and trade willing target. Now there's a rumor going on that the uh, Simmons is potentially being looked at by the Raptors. I'll tell you one thing, okay? I am not trading Ben Simmons to the Toronto Raptors. That is one thing I'm not doing. You can call me crazy. You can say whatever you want. I'm just not trading them to a team coached by Nick Nurse, a team like the Raptors, because I already know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. And I'm just not trading them to the Raptors. I'm just not doing it, especially in our conference. No way. Even though I don't know how he would fit alongside Pascal Siakam unless he starts to shoot, unless he became like a small ball five or something. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it when it comes to the Raptors. Um, but, yeah, Kyle Lowry would be a great option. I kind of view Kyle Lowry as going to, as you know, that player that's going to be like that pick up this offseason, not in the same manner as Chris Paul, but more so like, you know, having that impact on a team that really needs it. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I'm looking at. That's where I'm looking at in terms of Kyle Lowry. And, you know, I, I don't know what Toronto is going to be able to get back for him in a sign and trade because they know he has to leave. Like, he's not coming back. So, I don't know, man. But, I, I, I mean, Kyle Lowry's definitely a guy near the top of my list. Now, I would have never said this before, but, like, you know, if you have to live with Kyle Lowry, that's not a bad option. It's really not. Not at all. DeMar DeRozan's listed as a, uh, a shooting guard. People, what do you guys think about the Rosen? People keep on telling me like, "Oh, uh, the Sixers need to aggressively pursue the Rosen." I'm on the opposite side of that. I don't, I don't want the Rosen on this team. I don't. I know he's a, he's a baller. I know he can, you know, create his own shot mid range. I know that. Okay, he can give you 20, 25, whatever. He's going to make other players better. He's just a, a willing scorer, but he cannot shoot it from long range. He can't. I just don't think DeMar DeRozan is the guy to get you over the hump. Now, maybe if he was a third option, maybe. But I just, I'm not banking on DeMar DeRozan. I'm just not doing that. Um, that's just my personal opinion, though. A lot of people think that we should aggressively pursue him. So let me know. <sighs> Man, this is not a... Uh, this is not a strong class. I'll tell you that. Victor Oladipo hurt way too much. Goran Dragic. I mean, are these guys that really get you over the hump and, and go all the way? I don't know, man. Tim Hardaway Jr. could be a nice pickup depending on how much you got to pay him. Dennis Schroeder wants like a ton of money. So I don't know about that. Evan Fournier, I guess, could be a pickup. <laughs> Patty Mills, Tony Snell, Dinwiddie, Josh Richardson. Lonzo Bull is going to be an interesting one. I don't see Lonzo Bull coming to Philly, though. DeMar plays like he's in the 90s. Exactly. Exactly. Philly Take fan, what's going on, man? Appreciate you being in here. We need some three-point shooters. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, the rest of these players are just – they're not doing it for me. They're not. Um, and, and this is why I've been saying, you know, the trade market has to be there. And, look, I'm completely trusting in Daryl Morey here. Like, we have to go out and get a trade done, a huge trade done. Because, honestly, this is not cutting it. It really is not. 
Kawhi Leonard's probably going to opt out of his option, but would Kawhi Leonard really come to Philly? I don't know. I think it would be tough. And look at the rest of these guys. Like, again, there's more players that's going to be added to the market, but it's like, <sighs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. That's why I'm, I'm banking on a huge trade, whether it's Dame Lillard, whether it's a sign and trade from Kyle Lowry. I don't know. <sighs> How do you feel if we did this deal, Ben and Furkan, for Devontae? Where'd that comment go? How do you feel if we did this deal, Ben and Furkan, for Murray, um, Dejounte Murray, and Demar with a first? I'm not. I don't know. I don't know if I'm really interested in that, man. I don't think that puts us over the top. I don't think that puts us over the top. Just my personal opinion, though. So. Do not send Ben to the Raptors. Yeah, I'm not sending Ben to the Raptors. That's the one team I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it with. Why don't you see Lonzo coming to Philly? I just don't. I don't know. Like, I think it would be a good fit for Lonzo, but I just don't see it happening. I think he's going to get a ton of money, and I just – I don't know. It's nothing against Lonzo. He's been working on his game. He's been improving. I just don't view him as a type of player that would pick Philly as a destination. <clears throat> we really need to move Tobias for cap relief. We could do Tobias for Bertans that would create enough cap to get Dinwiddie. Bertans is literally making a ton of money. I'm not taking Bertans. That's a fact. No way am I taking Davis Bertans. Talk about over – Paid man, mm -mm. I agree. Kane Darrell has some work to do, man. Nelson, what's going on, bro? What's up, Nelson? I like Ferk. Eh. Toby choked hard in the Hawk series, he was super inefficient. I mean, he didn't have his best series, a couple of the big games didn't come up. That's why I'm saying, like, if we had to move Ben and Tobias, I'm fine with that. If we can get a, a huge star in here and get some. Some wing shooters. Somebody was proposing to me <coughs> yesterday when I talked about the uh, the Kings trade. They were saying we should trade for Buddy Heald, Bagley, and three first rounders. Then we should take Bagley and the three first rounders and try to move them and get a star. Then we would have a star, Buddy Heald, and Joel Embiid, and maybe Tobias Harris. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's definitely interesting. But, yeah, this free agent market's not cutting it. So, to be honest, we need we need to go out. Like I've been saying, we got to bank on everything and make a huge move. Um, the draft's coming up. We don't really have a lot of leverage. And we don't have – like, this is the tough part about it, man. We don't have a lot of cap space right now. Unless we want to go – like, obviously, we can go into the luxury tax, but that's not going to happen with these owners. And – you know, I, I just really feel like a trade is is pretty much the best and only option right now. We're not going to sign anybody outright. We have too much on our books. And then at the same time, you know, oh, we don't have a lot of draft picks this year. Like we have future picks, right? It's going to have to take a salary swap and some picks. Like, But what I do like so far is that the playing field for Ben Simmons does seem like it is uh, it's pretty healthy right now. And I, I expect that to continue. If we're getting some of these offers already, and this is before the finals even ends, I think it's going to pick up. All right. Let's transition a little bit. Let's talk about the NBA finals because this was uh, – I watched most of this game last night. And honestly, it feels like the momentum has flipped. It really does. It feels like the momentum has flipped. The Bucks feel like they're back in it, but – I don't know how to feel about these playoffs anymore. I don't know how to feel about these playoffs anymore because, you know, last series I thought Giannis was going to be done for the playoffs. He came back, he came back and he looks so healthy right now. Chris Paul injured his shoulder. He was looking fine. Now he looks injured again. I don't know how to feel, but the Bucks seem hungry. They seem like they're on top of it. And, well, the Suns have a lot of young guys. And 
Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? The Suns were up by a ton. Left. The Suns, if they end up losing the series, right, they are going to look back at last night's game and say, dang, we lost an opportunity. I forget how much it was, but, man, they got outscored by a ton in the fourth quarter. They were up. They had the game. They had the game. Look at this play by Giannis, man. And this is what I wanted to say first and foremost. Let's watch this play real quick. Look at that. Aliou Giannis blocks it. Get it out of here, man. You see this play right here? Look at this. Again, a crucial bucket, a minute 20 to go. They need this. Perfect execution play, and Giannis gets back. All right? Here's what I want to say, first and foremost. Shout out to Seth, great channel member, my guy, coming in with a $2 donation. Very much appreciated, man. Says, have to make a big move. Get Ben off the book. Dame. Yes, sir, man. We're going to bank on that. I don't want to be disappointed, but we, we do have to have multiple options. You know what I mean? We need to have a fallback plan. It doesn't seem really bright in terms of the market. So, you know, but I, but I trust Daryl Moore to get something huge done. I really do. Um, but, you know, it, it's just tough because the longer you wait out this whole trade process, right, then Ben obviously <coughs> is going to know, like, he's being shopped and – I don't know. At that point, it's just like, what do you do? Do you end up bringing him back if you can't find the right trade? What is that? What message does that send to the fans? What message does that send to next year? Right? Do you try to wait till the trade deadline? But what if certain guys aren't available and then, you know, it's a whole mess. So I, I'm just waiting for the, the Woj bombs. This player is available. That player is available. Like, we're going to have to do something huge, man. But I agree, Seth. Ben's money has to get off the books. In NBA, contracts are fully guaranteed. And it's way too much for what Ben's being paid for what we're trying to do. We can significantly upgrade our team. So I agree with you, Seth. But, yeah, I have a message for everybody out there, okay? Don't ever – listen to me close. Don't ever try to compare Ben Simmons – to Giannis Antetokounmpo, to me, ever again. Ever again. Ever again. Don't ever try to compare Ben Simmons to Giannis ever again. Now, do I think the Suns can come back and win this series? I think the Suns probably do, even though I may have cursed them, to be honest, by saying they were going to win. But look, don't ever compare Ben to Giannis again. You know why? Because they are not the same player. For years, we kept on saying, you know, <clears throat> Ben and Giannis are the future. Ben and Giannis are the future. Ben and Giannis are the future. No, they're not. The way this man Giannis is playing, you know, he may not be the best shooter, but what does he do? He shoots. He may not be the best at something. He may not, he may be criticized for something, but what does he do? He comes out and and he he takes advantage of the criticism. He takes it to heart. I remember back then, and this may be one of my largest mistakes. I used to say that I would take Ben over Giannis in the long term. But what I've seen in the playoffs from Giannis, this man has the heart of a warrior. And I always knew that. But what I'm seeing right now, he's literally taking everything to heart. The one thing I've always said about Giannis that I loved about him is that he he said himself, in the offseason, he will not train with any competitors because he likes to feel like he doesn't want to give away his own secrets. I respect the heck out of that. I really do. But what I'm seeing in these playoffs, man, it's crazy how, you know, just a year or two ago, we were saying Ben and Giannis, like who's going to end up being the alpha dog, right? Who's going to end up being the top guy? They're not even close anymore. They both have the natural gifts and abilities, but I got to give all the respect in the world to Giannis. I don't think he's going to win this series, even though I think they have a decent chance to do so. But Giannis has this. He has grit. 
that block that he made that we just saw, just just the way he – this man will is literally playing on one leg, and he's just going downhill every possession. He is fearless. He will miss seven threes in a row and come right back down on the floor and let it fly. He doesn't care. Crazy, man. Don't ever try to compare Ben to Giannis again. We were wrong. We, we were wrong. Let's look at this one more time. What, what a play. I mean, for him to get back and make a play like this, I know he's, you know, he's really lengthy, but look at that. Oh, my gosh. And he flexes to the crowd. That, I mean, that's unbelievable. I've gained a, a huge respect for Giannis. He's never been one of my favorite players, but, man, man. Lindy, what's going on, bro? Shout out to Lindy, man. I'm actually going to be on Lindy's channel tonight at 6 p.m. If you guys have not yet, actually, let's throw uh, let's throw Lindy's channel in, in the chat, man. Hold up, let's let's pull it up real quick. Hold up. Then I want to show you guys another clip. I need a favor from everybody in the chat. We got 100 in here. Guys, if you have not yet, please like the stream, subscribe if you're new, do all that good stuff. Shout out to Lindy in the chat. He's also a great channel member. I'm throwing his uh, his link in the chat now. Guys, this man needs 36 subscribers more. Let's 30. I know 36 people in here can get this man to 200 subscribers. Let's get him to 200 subscribers. I know 36 people in here can subscribe to his channel. He's a great content creator, Eagles and Mavs. Go sub him up right now. I want to see that number hit 200, man. Go show him some love right now. Anyway. Farm says Giannis worked his whole life. Yeah, Giannis came from, I mean, he literally came from nothing. He came from nothing. Him and his brothers, I remember watching the documentary, like, they were struggling to eat their next meal. And, I mean, they, this dude literally came from nothing. Like, I remember he, I think he went to a basketball camp and he bet everything on it. He bet everything on that. And it worked out, but man, um, that grit determination, it still, it still flows through Giannis and his presence, you know, it it just flows through his presence. But anyway, another thing about the game last night, and to be honest, the reason the game was lost is because the Suns turned the ball over way too much. I think they had 17 turnovers and the Bucks had five. And something's going on with Chris Paul. He did not look the same. So if he's not healthy, then who knows what's going to happen. Give me one second. But anyway... Here's a play last night. If you, you guys have probably seen it by now. Devin Booker, they were they were making jokes. They were saying Devin Booker is the first player to have 40 points in a playoff game and have seven fouls. They, they would not foul this man out of the game. It's actually good that the Bucs won this game. Because if the Bucs did not win this game and the Phoenix Suns won when Devin Booker should have obviously been fouled out, the NBA would have, I mean, that would have probably defeated the whole series if it's not already defeated enough, given the fact it's a different kind of series. And, and to be honest, like it just would have took all the energy that's left, but, but look at this. That should have been the last foul. I should have got him out of there. How was that not a foul? How was that not a foul? The NBA needs to pick – like, it's been bad all year, but really in the NBA Finals you're not going to make that call? Really? That could have costed them the game. That's on Devin Booker. 
You want your stars to be in? Don't make stupid decisions like that. That was a dumb decision. But anyway, you can see the, the inexperience of the Suns taking over a bit. They um they just don't they didn't they didn't look confident the last two games. It's it's weird how home court advantage seems to give this extra like presence and life to certain teams. Um and I, I, I do think it'll flip back when it goes back to Phoenix, but um Right now, the Bucks look like they're in command. They really do, right? Even though Booker had 42 last night, Giannis with 26 and 14 and 8, three steals, two blocks. I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? Chris Middleton had 40. I, I, it's unbelievable how this man could play this way at home, and then when he goes on the road, he's, a, he's the complete opposite. I don't know, man. It, it's crazy. But whatever's going on with, uh, with Chris Paul, 10 points, Four rebounds, seven assists, five turnovers. I mean, if he doesn't pick it up and he's not healthy, man, the Suns could be in jeopardy. They really could. They really could. Giannis is carrying that team in the playoffs. Not fact. Sex and some people just don't know talent. Yeah. Ben's untradeable for what he brings to the table. Giannis has the heart of a lion. Ben's severely overpaid to match salaries with a high salaried star, high draft. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've garnered a new respect for Giannis, even more than before, just because he's playing like an absolute dog right now. Um, and that's just how that goes. Ben for Damon, a first-round pick. That's definitely not getting it done. <laughs> oh, man. What package could you create to acquire Damon after the finals is over? Look, I, I've made my – I made trade videos about this already. I'll pull it up again. I'll pull it up again. So this is – look, just real quick before we, we talk about our last thing, which is the offseason plan. This is my trade right here. Hold up. Let me share my screen again. This is the best trade that I was able to come up with. If you look at this trade – Please tell me how every team does not benefit from this trade. Because most likely, a Dame trade could end up being a three-way trade. Damian Lillard and Covington, or you could even throw Derrick Jones Jr. in there to match the salary to the Sixers. The Blazers get D'Angelo Russell that they can pair with McCollum. They get a young talent who has upside if they can keep him on the floor in Malik Beasley, they get Matisse Stiebel, and I trust me, I don't want to give him up. Maybe you throw in Maxi instead, but they get a young, enticing player, whichever side they wish to go, right? Their defense struggles. They get three first-round picks. So the Blazers can continue to build for the future, but they can still, you know, keep a decent core on the floor. And then the Timberwolves get Ben Simmons, the guy that they're desperately, you know, um, you know, trying to acquire, they get a vet point guard in George Hill, and they get a second round pick. Tell me how any team does not benefit from this trade. This is exactly what each team wants. Maybe not. Maybe the Blazers don't want this, but just say Dame requests out. This is a perfect trade right here. Joke, what's going on, man? <clears throat> Can Dame request a trade? Yeah. Um, how about Drew four for twenty? Yeah, Drew's got to step up. Uh, Giannis's mindset, and passion to be great, has always been light years different than Ben. I agree with that. I agree with that. Rick, what's going on, man? Shout out to Rick Cat. What's going on? Ben Simmons isn't getting traded. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, Kevin. Keep saying it until it happens. Keep saying it until it happens. I love my Sixers, but I can't believe some of your takes through the years on Ben over other players taking this long. See, here's the thing, Jay Moore. You're not wrong. 
but it's not like people like you are acting like it is such a crime for us to believe that a man with all the natural gifts wouldn't take the opportunity to improve upon one thing. Like that is not an asinine type of thought. If a guy is 22 years old and can do everything well except one, it's not crazy to think that he's going to take, especially after getting bounced in two playoff series and his flaw being one of the main results as to why or the main reasons as to why that result happened. It's not crazy to think that he's going to take that upon himself and improve. But the fact that it got to where it's at now, you know, now it, we've kind of seen the light. Like, you know, he really does not want to do it. He just doesn't. But I don't think it's crazy at all to believe for one second that especially a number one overall pick is going to take the time to improve upon his game, especially when he puts out there in the in, in the public videos of him shooting the ball and things of that nature. I don't think it's crazy at all. <clears throat> it's a good day. Philly's about to have Lillard and Watson. It's a good day. Yeah, I saw that thing with Deshaun Watson. I'll probably end up, you know, I haven't made an Eagles video in a while. I'm probably going to make a, uh, a Eagles video soon, but there's still some things that have to, to happen in terms of clearing whatever's going on or, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I like the trade get Dame while keeping Maxi. Yeah, we could do that. We could maybe keep Thibel. Who knows? But this is a good package for all the teams, in my opinion. Sixers got a break after the Fultz fiasco by getting Maxi a star in the making. Yeah, I agree. But And I do think there's going to be some hidden gems this year as well. I do think there's going to be some hidden gems as to, you know, like, like, what are we, what are we going to get in this draft? Maybe a hidden gem. That's it. I don't think we're going to trade up, try to get a player. No, I think we got to get a proven star. So, could you create a possible two-way trade scenario? Yeah, I already have one, man. I'll show you that, and then we'll we'll talk about the. Uh... Here's my two-way trade scenario. Maybe you could throw in, again, you could exchange Thibault or Maxi. This is my two-way trade scenario right here. Salaries line up. First-round picks might be a little bit different, but this is what I'm looking at right here. So, Y'all really thought Ben was as good as Giannis, shaking my head. Wow. The thing is that Ben has the natural abilities to be as good as Giannis, but he doesn't have it here. That's the thing. What if we replace the Wolves for the Spurs? I just don't think DeJounte Murray, Derek White, Lonnie Walker, whoever else, I don't think that's enough to get us over the hump. And I, I'm not a big guy on DeRozan, so. But that's just how I'm feeling about it. <clears throat> There's no chance the Blazers would give up Dame for those players and the Wolves give up D'Lo. Listen, there's a thing in, in the NBA in business. It's called being unhappy, right? If Damian Lillard was to come out, because he's not going to say anything public. He already said that. But if he goes behind closed doors and says, you know, I just don't think it's going to work here, they don't have a choice. That's what people don't understand. If it, it just say Dame is unhappy, they don't have a choice. <laughs> But anyway, <clears throat> the last thing we'll talk about is the off-season plan. So um, it's going to be an interesting off-season. I think this is how I think the order of operations will go. This is how I think the order of operations will go this off-season. I think the finals are going to end. The draft's in a couple weeks. I think we'll go through the draft. We'll get a player, maybe like a, you know, a hidden gem, a guy that might develop on the team. Maybe if we get a star, that'd be great, like a, a guy that falls because the, the draft's coming really fast. Um, I think we're going to, you know, just stay where we're at in the draft. I think we're going to draft two players in this draft, see how they go, fine. Then free agency is like a week after the draft. So I think for that entire week, we are going to, like, Woj 
His Twitter is going to be on fire. We're going to hear this guy um, plans to sign here. This guy plans to sign here. This and this and this and this. And we're going to start to plug all the piece together. And then I think during the month of August is when, you know, because the season is still on a shortened schedule here, like the off season, you know, we only have a couple months. So I think during that like free agency period and right after, we're going to start to hear like, okay, guys want out this and that, right? And the Sixers are probably going to try to put together some packages, whether it's Damian Lillard, whether they try to put a package together for Kyle Lowry, whether it's another unknown star that comes out and says, you know, I want out. And I think that's what will happen there. Now, if we go out and acquire a huge star, then there we go. We fill out the team around them. If that doesn't happen, then we have to find our options. I would still try to acquire if, – if Dame or, or something of that caliber doesn't happen, I say we go after Kyle Lowry, and I say we try to get a forward in free agency, right? Try to recruit one here and get some good wing shooters and see how it plays out. But at that point, you know, and, and we just got to fill out the bench. The bench is important. People don't think about that. The bench is important. Our bench was not good enough, has not been good enough for years now. Time to go out and get a couple scores. Time to go out and get some snipers off the bench. So that's where I'm viewing it. Joel and B will probably sign the Supermax. Seth Curry will probably remain on this team. Uh, Danny Green, I feel like, is going to sign somewhere else. Tobias Harris is an iffy one for me. I think Tobias Harris depends on what happens otherwise with Ben Simmons. Could I see a potential scenario where Ben Simmons comes back to the Sixers? I think there's a very slim chance. And I think only if there's nothing, like, it, you know, if we have the bare bottom of offers and it's just like none of these just make sense, then they try to bring them back. And they try to, you know, move forward. But I just don't – I think the time has come. And I don't see – because Daryl Morey has a pulse with the fans. He knows that it just does, it's not the right fit anymore. So I don't really see it happening. But so far, based off the playing field that we've seen, I really do think that there's going to be a lot more offers for Ben. And I think once we get into this, like, draft free agency period, I think teams are going to start to see, like, okay, we need this. Do we want to go, or maybe even a small market team, right? That says we don't have the we don't have the popularity, we don't have the presence, the power to go out and sign so and so. Let's go ahead and trade for a Ben Simmons. Let's go ahead and trade for Ben Simmons and try him out. A small market team, because he's not. I don't think he's going to a big market team if he does get moved. He's going to go somewhere where there's no pressure, nobody's scrutinizing him. Everybody's just going to clap. Woohoo! Good job, Ben. That's what's going to happen. And he's either going to work on his game or he's not. But in terms of, of the Sixers, they need to get an adequate haul back. Because I agree, you don't. But the, at the same time, I also view Tobias Harris as being available. People keep saying, let's let's keep Toby. I let, let me warn you about that, okay? Tobias Harris did not show up in two of the biggest games when we needed him. Right now, though, I would say his value is tremendously higher than it was last season. Just because of, you know, he proved to be a lot more consistent. All right, Sexton, you got to go, man. No spamming in the chat. Anyway, Tobias Harris is 28 years old. He can be a nice third option. Now, if we get the right kind of player, right, if we just say we get a Damian Lillard or a player of that caliber, I'll, I'll keep Tobias Harris as a third option. The big shots don't have to be on his shoulders. He can give us his 20 a night, and, and we'll be fine with it. He even stepped up on the defensive end. But if we live with, I don't know, Kyle Lowry, is Tobias enough then? I don't know. I don't know. So. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like what will happen with Tobias Harris depends on what happens with Ben Simmons. <clears throat> Trent. 
Trade Ben for Chris Stapps, Porzingis, sign Devontae Graham. I'm I'm sorry, ref. I, I'm not taking a chance with Chris Stapps, Porzingis. I'm not trading. I'm not taking that chance. No way. He gets hurt way too much. There's been questions about him and just how he feels. Yeah, there's no way I'm taking a chance on Chris Stapps, Porzingis. But hopefully, some of these young guys too, like Paul Reed, Isaiah Joe, can step up and you know have that kind of impact that we want them to, especially off the bench, right? I thought they should have got a, you know some more minutes. If we do get, if we do go out and get a point guard and we keep Tyrese Maxey, I think he's going to be a great sixth or seventh man. I do. Um, but yeah, that's just how I'm feeling. But I'm telling you, some teams with with Tobias at 28 years old, I know the contract's a bit hefty. I know some teams would be willing to take that chance. Some teams would be willing to take that chance, right? <laughs> Maybe a team with a bunch of young guards wants to bring on a, a veteran forward that can at least, you know, be a good presence for them. Give them a, a 20 a game. Let's see. BLSG, what's good? We need to stop giving all the bench minutes to rookies. Well, we need to go out and get a, a veteran scorer, man. We need to go out and get ourselves a Lou Will type of player. We need to go out and get ourselves – uh, a Jordan Clarkson type of player. We need that. We need that desperately. Sharif Cooper is the best basketball player in his position. Watch him in high school. I'll have. A, I'll probably have a draft video or two coming out. Uh, we should make a deal with the Pacers. What would the Pacers give us though? Like Brogdon and a first round pick. Is that like again? I just feel like we're selling ourselves too short. I, I like that as an initial base offer. I just don't know what else we can get from them. Like, I don't want Sabonis. I don't really want Miles Turner. I don't know. They don't really have a guy for me that that strikes that deal. I know Indiana. I've been seeing some Indiana fans say they want Ben Simmons. Fine. But what are you going to give us? Are you going to give us Karis LeVert? <laughs> TJ Warren, I don't think they're going to move him either. So... It's just it's it's tough, man. We need to get a base of, of where Ben Simmons is at, but it you know it seems like Daryl Moore is going to hold strong. It seems like Daryl Moore is going to hold strong. So at least he's not just going to sell him for anything. Toby sucks up too many shots. Nah, it's not fair to say. If anything, Tobias has to take more shots because Ben won't take more shots. That's ridiculous, man. Ben can average 10 shots a game every single game. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He was the best scorer in the Washington series. Right. Against Washington, though. We needed him in the second round as well. But at least, he, I mean, he went out swinging. He tried. But he had a great season. Needed him in the big games. Sexton has to go. Don't come to Philly. Trade for Dame, sign and trade for Lowry. We're not going to get uh, both. Tobias for Sexton and Love. I don't know if they would do that. Tobias for Bertans. No way. No way I'm taking uh, Davis Bertans. If you watch this guy, I mean, he stinks, man. He really is so inconsistent. At that point, you're just getting another overrated, overpaid player. They signed him to a contract. They they regret that contract every single day to Wizards do. There's no way. No way. If he was getting paid less, yeah. But right now, no. <clears throat> now, this trade I mentioned yesterday on the video, if they offer us Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, and a first for Ben, it would probably have to be more than that, maybe like two or three first, uh, maybe two. I'm, I'm thinking about that deal. I really am. Because I think Halliburton's going to be great. He's got the length, athleticism to play the one or two. Buddy Heald can come in and be a sniper. And then I think he could also go out and have flexibility to get another star. So I'm thinking of, I'm thinking about this deal if if they uh, offer that. That's definitely an offer I'm putting near the top. I would like the Aaron Fox. I just don't see the Kings trading him. Doesn't really make sense to me. So, But...
Three-way where we get a package sent around Hart, Lonzo, and Sexton. Cleveland gets Ben in the number 10 pick, and Nola gets the number three pick. I don't know if that's what Nola's going to want to do, though. I don't know if that would be enough for them. But I, I, I like the idea. I like the idea, but it's still a lot in terms of the Sixers, you know. We're just going to have to wait and see what the really the, the playing field is. But again, nothing is going to happen like in the next week or two. We're going to have to wait to see because if say we made a move and then a huge superstar requests out, like then we'll regret that. So at the end of the day, we're just going to have to wait and see. Trade Tobias for Brogdon and others as salary fillers. Well, again, the thing is, we could trade Tobias, but we have to see what happens with Ben first. We don't want to get, you know, the wrong fit on the team. So I think I think Ben is the first domino to fall. Three team trade: Lillard to the Sixers, Buddy Bagley, Maxi, and picks to the Blazers, and Simmons to the Kings. Hmm. I mean, that's that's not a bad starting point. It's not a bad starting point. I think there would have to be a lot of picks thrown in there, but I don't mind I, I don't mind that trade as a base. Taz, what's going on, bro? We have to get our bench up too. Ben sucks, so does the bench. I agree. I agree. The bench needs to get much better. What's to talk about? We're just talking, man. We're hanging out. We talked uh Talked Sixers free agent veteran minimum contracts, the free agent market. We talked the NBA finals. We're about to get off here in a few minutes, but um, we're just talking about the offseason plan, what we're thinking right now. Um, but yeah, man, if you guys are in here, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Appreciate all you guys being in here, man. Appreciate all you guys being in here, man. I'm going to be on uh, Lindy's channel later tonight. Be sure to sub them up. If you guys haven't yet, Click that pin link in the comments. Check out the new merch, man. Check out the new merch, man. Just dropped it. Support the channel. Hold on. Let me throw uh, Lindy's link in here, man. Let's get him to 200 subscribers, man. Let's pump him up to 200. Click that link in the chat. Hit that subscribe. <sighs> You're delusional if you think you can get that Kings package for it. No, 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 Hog. You're the delusional one. You're the delusion. Get, don't get me started, Hog. Don't get me. You are the delusional one. If you think you're going to throw Buddy Heald, Marvin Bust the third, and three first round picks and get Ben Simmons, you are the delusional one. Don't get me started, bro. You think you're, we're just going to give Ben Simmons up for Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley? What are you, smoking grade A crack? Come on, man. <laughs> you better you better send in the Aaron Fox or Tyrese Halliburton. Come on, bro. But I wouldn't put it past the Kings to do something stupid. That's what their franchise does. Stupid. That's why they don't get anywhere. They would actually be the type of franchise – to, to sign De'Aaron Fox to a five-year max and then trade him. What do the Kings do well? <laughs> oh, man. Dominus Center needs a solid two-guard, solid traditional point, whatever. Yeah, and, and Joel Embiid has never, ever had a point guard. There's like a whole door that isn't even unlocked when it comes to Joel B. There isn't even a whole, there's a whole door that's not even unlocked yet when it comes to Joel B. It's crazy. It's crazy. You're a delusional Philly fan. Oh my God. Kings fans are idiots, man. Idiots. Did you watch Ben Simmons? No, I didn't watch him, bro. I only watch every damn game. This is why the Kings don't get anywhere, bro. Their GMs probably think the same way.
you can maybe get Tyrese, but you're not getting Tyrese and Buddy. <laughs> the Kings suck, man. Ben Simmons needs to change positions, man. He may, maybe he does. Maybe he needs to change heart. Maybe that's what he needs to do. You act like Buddy Heald wants to be with the Kings. This man, Buddy Heald, wants to get out of there so bad. He doesn't want to be here in, in Sacramento. He doesn't want to be there. I mean, come on, man. The Aaron Fox, I understand that. I don't think the Kings would give up the Aaron Fox. But you want Ben Simmons for nothing, essentially? What the hell has Marvin Bagley done? Nothing. Nothing. Tyrese Halliburton's a nice, uh, you know, potential upside. You sound like Philly fans that wouldn't give up Shake Milton for Bradley Beal. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. No wonder the Kings don't go anywhere. I could see Maury trade Ben and Toby to different teams for picks and players and then flipping those picks for a blockbuster trade. Yeah, but there's still a lot of risk there, Chris. There's a lot of risk. Not stupid to pick up Ben and build around him. Right. But you're not going to get him for pennies. You're not going to get him because he still is one of the best defenders in the league. As much as I hate him at this point, he's still going to bring value to your team. You're not going to get him for role players. I'm a Lakers fan, but I got a Philly homie that should follow you. This live is a vibe. Hey, appreciate it, Jose, man. Look, we, we do this a lot. We do regular videos, live streams like this, talking, you know, sports, Sixers. We talk other sports as well. We're just hanging out, man. We welcome all fans. We welcome all fans, man. Even some with the worst takes. We, uh, we have some fun up in here, man. No doubt. No doubt. Appreciate, appreciate that, man. Sh uh, share this stream out. Share this content out. I'm trying to grow the channel, so. <laughs> Lindy says, come on. Nah, I, it's look, I'm we, we were we were supposed to be out here 15 minutes ago, but we have people bringing up asinine takes. So I, you know, it just fuels me, keeps me going. Let's see. That's my point. Sixers are a point guard and a shooter away. We just need a point guard, man. We just need a, we need a pure point guard that can be our floor general, man. That could create his own shot. That's what we need. That's what we need. But we also need a bench too. So if we get Dane, that's Shaq and Kobe. You're making a comparison, not me. But yo, that would be a lethal combination. I just I think there's going to be a I think there's going to be a lot of talks, man. Ben Simmons and Shake for De'Aaron Fox. I would love De'Aaron Fox, but this is where I do agree with Kings fans. I don't think he's going to get traded. Why, who signs a player to a five-year max and then and then trades him? You know, it, it doesn't really make sense. But then again, in this situation, the whole Ben Simmons situation doesn't make sense at all. So who knows what's going to happen? And again, it is the Kings. They've done uh, worse things before. So. Even though Ben sucked this past playoffs, he can transform a whole franchise to get teams into a playoff spot. He can. He can. It that's that's the whole hard thing about this is that the potential is there. He just doesn't he doesn't capitalize on it. So he doesn't capitalize. And we just don't have any more time to wait. We don't have any we need a player that's gonna come in and push us to where we need to go next season. Ben for Beal, Levine, or Dame, some star. If not, we keep him. We might have to end up keeping him if we can't get a huge player like that. I agree. Asia, what's going on? Welcome on in, Asia. Appreciate you being in here. Tyrese maybe will be better than Fox, at least from what I've seen. The kid is special. Sack isn't trading him for Ben. Okay, then don't trade him and don't get Ben Simmons. I said it myself. I said it yesterday on a video. So I know you don't watch the channel. Tyrese, I wanted this guy last year in the draft. He's going to be he's going to be a star, man. But you're not going to give up nothing and get a 24-year-old player like Ben Simmons. You're just not. You're just not. If Ben was 29, then yeah, I agree with you, but it, it's not going to happen. So, 
You can keep Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley. That's, you can give us all the first round picks in the world. If you watch the Sixers and, and you understood Sixers, you know, you would know that we have to win next year. Like we, what I mean is we have to be in contention starting next year. We can't bank on four draft picks. We can't. So I trust in Daryl Morey, though. I trust in Daryl Morey to get something done. Ben Simmons for Kylo Quinn, Neto, Poirier, and Norvell Pell. <laughs> Surprised Dame isn't requesting a trade to Philly. The one thing about Dame is he's not going to put anything public. All the things you hear about Dame, they're not going to be true. He's going to keep it behind closed doors. He said it himself. So we'll have to see what happens. Marvin Bagley is not a bad NBA player, but the problem is his health. He's not going to fit in Philadelphia. I don't want Marvin Bagley on my team. He just doesn't fit here. I don't think he fits here at all. Um, I would take Buddy Heald, but I would also have to take Tyrese Halliburton with that. I'm going to be working at Citizens Bank Park. They need city field workers. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Have it. Citizens Bank Park's a great stadium. I love it. I love it. <sighs> Defense, for some reasons, is overrated. The reason it's overrated is because look at uh, look at the teams that win, right? They just they have a bunch of shooters. They can score the ball at any rate they want to, and that's just that. You need good defense on your team. I agree, but offense is more important at this point, especially you know guys that can create their shot. We lost the series because we were playing four on five on offense. So, Emma says, I don't think Ben has much value because he won't shoot and doesn't work hard. Maybe, but so far we've seen two offers that show that he he does have decent value at least. So, that's the thing. We, we can't really gauge it. We don't know where his value is specifically at. So, we'll have to wait and see. Derek, what's going on, man? You think Kings fans are bad? Minnesota wants Ben without even giving us deal. Yeah. See, these are the type of fans that you meet on Twitter. You know what I mean? That want to trade everything for a, a bag of Skittles. Like, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. P even people in the Sixers fan base want to, you know, get a star. They want to give up Furkan, Korkmaz, and Shake Milton and, like, Ben Simmons. It's not going to happen. It's just not. So... I hate to give up Maxi. Seriously, I'd even start him this year and try to get a star at another position. I love Maxi. I think he's a dog. He works. Trust me, I don't want to give up Maxi or Thibel. I really don't. But I'm just saying, if a player like Damian Lillard is there and one of them has to be included, I have to do that. I just have to. So. A lot of people think Ben traded by draft night. Not happening. Yeah, I agree, Kay. It's not happening. There's no way that's happening. Mm -mm. Draft picks are not the way to go for this team unless we acquire four of them and then subsequently right away trade them for a star. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be a long-waited out process. So we, we have to wait and see who becomes available. But – Malik Beasley and D'Lo to D'Lo to Philly wouldn't be bad. At least these guys have a little experience. I wouldn't mind that trade. I wouldn't mind that if that had, is what it came down to. That would be somewhere in the middle of my list. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of offers, a lot of things we're going to look at. We will see how it goes. Um, I think once we get past this little, you know, this point with the draft and then once we get into free agency, I think we're going to hear a lot more. Um but we'll see. We got to make something large happen. No more time to waste. 
No more time to hope and pray that Ben Simmons is going to shoot a basketball. No more time. The way we went out, it was sad. I'm going to throw my guy Lindy's link in the chat one more time, guys. Go sub him up right now. I'll be on his channel later today. Go hit him with a subscribe, man. Does great content. Shout out to everybody for being in here, man. Hanging out with your boy. Uh, we'll keep dropping content, doing live streams. And we'll have a lot to do soon, man. Definitely. If you guys haven't yet, check out the merch, man. Merch is fresh and it is up. Click the link in the chat. Go check out the, the uh, Philly Take with RB merch. Go check it out. Philly Mike, what's going on? Let's go. We're getting ready to get up out of here, man. Shout out to Philly Mike, Philly Talk Podcast. Shout out to everybody else here in the chat. That being said, man, hit that like on your way out. Hit that subscribe. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace.